Good evening, everybody. I'm New Center Maine, Zach Blanchard. We're doing some post-game analysis after Governor Mills' state of the budget address tonight. She's putting forward a balanced $8.4 billion budget to the legislature with a lot of focus on health care, schools, and jobs. And to break it all down with us tonight, we have New Center Maine's political analyst, Phil Herrmann and Ethan Strimling. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, Phil, let's get your reactions right off the bat. Well, I, I thought uh, Governor Mills made a very good case for the struggle that she and the, the people who've had to deal with the uh, pandemic uh, fallout over the last year and why the government should be um, celebrated for the results. Uh, so I, I, give her, I give her credit for being prepared and organized and explaining where we've been. Um, what I was a little disappointed about is where are we going from here? Frankly, Zach, I, I think she should have been in a better position to say, here's how we're going to get your kids back to school. Uh, the, the statistics, the science that she talked about clearly shows that students should be back at school. And the other piece I, I would say is that she noted that, uh, you know, one out of three new home sales came to uh, people who moved here from out of state and she should have given them a welcoming message and invest in our communities and build your businesses here. Maybe that's coming, but uh, she had a great opportunity to make that the headlines tomorrow. All right. And Ethan, obviously the governor taking the chance to talk about issues like Black Lives Matter all the way to the CMP transmission line project. Your reactions? Yeah, I mean, look, Janet Mills is, if nothing else, she is incredibly competent at her job. And I think that that really showed tonight. She comes through as somebody who understands government. She's been in government for a long time. She understands the sort of how to make things work. Uh, you know, she tried to sort of find some emotional connection. I, honestly, I've seen her give speeches that were much more emotionally connected than this one. These are tough times for sure. But I, I would agree with Phil that I would have liked to have seen a little more from the speech in terms of where are we going from here, what's next, a little bit of vision from her, something to grab onto that when you walk away, you're going to be able to say to yourself, oh, that's what she wants to accomplish in the next year. I mean, I understand for sure these are very trying times and you've got to make people feel confident that she's doing the job that she needs to do. But the polls are clear. People feel comfortable with that. Where are we going from here? What's going to be next? How are we going to get there? Be visionary. Nobody in Maine wants to be stuck in yesterday. Nobody wants to be just stuck in today. We want to know where we're going. So I, I really wish I had heard a little more from her about the vision of where Maine can be and what clear actions she's going to take to get us there. Yeah, both of you really saying here that uh, the governor perhaps played it a little bit safe this go round. But of course, the big backdrop, you have the, the pandemic. Uh, she touched on uh, small businesses, schools, the 650 Mainers who have died to the coronavirus. Uh, and she's also facing a lot of ire from Republicans who are, are sick of the ongoing restrictions uh, put in place by the Mills administration. Uh, do you think this all forced the governor to play it safe here, Phil? Well, I, I think it was a great opportunity for her to explain the history. Here's where we've been a year ago. Here's why it was important. Look at the statistics that we can point to that we, we did a good job. Uh, thanks to the federal government that borrows the money rather than has the money in their budget. Uh, we, we got this money from the federal government and we did all these productive and quality uh, things. What I, what I wish I had heard tonight, Zach, was that, look, teachers are going to be number one. They're going to the front of the line to get their vaccinations so our kids can get back to school. Ask any parent in Maine, do you want your child back in school so they can get on with their lives and their future? I think you'd hear a resounding yes. And, and the opportunity to say, Look, uh, I know you've all been through tough times, whether you, you own a fitness facility or a hospitality facility or an entertainment or a cinema. Or, I, I understand what you've been through. And I know that many of you are probably never going to be able to get back into business. 
And I'm here to tell you that there's a brighter future. There's a vision of what our economy is going to look like. And your state government is going to be there to help you find a new path because you didn't make a big mistake. You got infected, inflected by uh, a big pandemic. Yeah, uh, that brings me to your, your focus on teachers time and time again and the vaccination. Uh, Governor seemed to kind of celebrate where Maine was uh, in terms of the vaccine rollout. But there are a lot of critics out there who say there have been a lot of missteps along the way and that it's just not going fast enough. Of course, the Mills administration will quickly say that's the federal government's fault. But either did the governor downplay uh, some of that criticism tonight? Uh, look, it, it had, the, the criticism of Janet Mills around this has never stuck because Janet, if nothing else, has been remarkably competent around this. We, we had some of the lowest rates in the country for the longest time. We did have the spike, of course. She was all over that. Some of us wished that she had actually done more in terms of trying to pull back our economy. She took some steps trying to make sure that workers were more protected. But you really can't launch a lot of criticism at her in terms of how she's responded. But Phil is correct in saying, you know, what are the next steps to make sure that we get back to where we want to be? Safety has to be first. I think his, you know, example around teachers, that would have been a great thing for workers, right? Making sure that workers who still have to go on the job and are risking their lives, trying to make sure that they have the hazard pay. She talked about child care, sort of universally looking at that across the state, try to make sure. But again, the speech really needed more vision. Where are we going from here? It's been a tough year and people want some optimism. People want to get their kids back in school. Kids want to start playing sports. People want to get back to work, but they want to be safe. And they also want to know what is the state going to look like a year from now when we are done with this and what are some of the initiatives that she's putting in place? So that was really the disappointing piece. But you know, to your question, she really, you're not going to be able to launch much criticism against her in terms of vaccinations, in terms of how she has responded to the coronavirus, to COVID. She, she has been all over it. It's been a clear focus. Clearly, Maine people recognize that and they appreciate her for it. Uh, and uh, schools keep com coming up time and time again. So $45 million um, in additional funding to K through 12 schools uh, as they continue kind of this remote uh, hybrid learning situation. And of course, there's this push to get them back into schools. I wanna go back to Phil now. Um, do you think that's enough? I think you, you touched on before, you wanted the governor to say, let's vaccinate our teachers, but $45 million uh, in additional funding to schools isn't nothing. No, it's not, and and it is a it is a signal that we care about what what the the government doing to create the environment for every student in Maine, wherever they live, to get a free public education at the expense of the of the taxpayers, and no one disputes that. But what it feels like is that families who have to adjust their own uh, uh, work schedules to accommodate the fact that their children are not in 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 school or not in athletics or have to stay at home at a time when they they need that socialization and that that uh, 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 maturation of their of their social skills. We have inflicted a tremendous burden on young families in Maine. And the statistics, the science that everyone is saying we should follow, says that young people are not as vulnerable to this virus as as the elderly. So let's vaccinate the teachers. Let's get the kids back in school so that they can enjoy their life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I think that's going to do a tremendous amount to help Maine families feel like the worst is behind us. Anything I think, Phil, it, it's, not, it's not life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These kids just want to play uh, lacrosse this spring, I think. <laughs> You know, it's a, it's a little more down to the earth, like, you know, seniors want to have a graduation. So, you know, I like what you're saying. I like what you're saying for sure about vaccinating teachers, respecting the fact that teachers have really done a good job in Maine of trying to make sure that they're trying to balance the safety and the educational needs of our kids. You know, one of the things that I would have liked her to do is a little more advocacy, perhaps for the stimulus package at the federal level to come out and talk about, yes, she's putting 45 million in schools, but it's still not gonna get us to the 55% that we need. Obviously, there's been a lot more expense in the last year. She should have dedicated some portion of her speech to really trying to push to make sure, to tell people you need to call Susan Collins and Angus King and tell them to pass the Recovery Act. You know, that Recovery Act, more than anything that the federal government can do and almost anything that Janet Mills can do, 
is going to help Maine families hand over fist in terms of just direct resources that people will help them pay their rent in terms of child care, making sure that folks get subsidy for their child care, small businesses getting loans to be able to reopen funds for making sure that we can keep people safe for vaccines and for testing. You know, that Recovery Act is a huge, huge piece of our future and making sure it passes. Susan Collins is a key vote in that. I would have loved to have heard her tonight say, hey, look, folks, we need to make sure that Susan Collins puts Maine first and votes for that Recovery Act. Yeah, instead, I think we saw there uh, that there was kind of the thanking all four members of the congressional delegation for their work that they've done in the past, not so much looking forward to the future. Uh, but at the end of the day, Governor Mills is putting forward a quote unquote balanced budget, $8.4 billion. Um, she had kind of a moment where she admitted that there are some people that are going to say, why don't we just spend a lot and fix all these problems and worry about it later? And there are going to be people that are saying, why not take this as an opportunity to save more money? Bill, that's him. Thoughts on that? Well, I, I think the the missing piece is that the federal government sent over a billion dollars to the state of Maine on top of what Maine taxpayers uh, have paid to support state government, and the mantra that we're all in this together. Go talk to people on Main Street. Talk to the people I cross paths with who who watch New Center Maine. They're, they don't feel like that we have all been in this together. There are some who have profited and benefited from this at the expense of others. And I think that's the message that, that Mainers want to know, that their government has heard that it hasn't been, we're all in this together. Some have paid a disproportionate price. And I would say on behalf of the, the main small family businesses and the young families trying to go to their jobs and raise their kids without being able to count on what day they're going to school have paid a disproportionate price and it's time to support them. Ethan, get your yeah. hand up there. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just raising my hand when you said there are some who want to spend more and there's some who want to spend less. So the spend less was on Phil, the spend more was on me because I do think that uh, workers you know, workers for me are the piece that we really need to focus on. Of course, small businesses, and I appreciate what Phil's saying around that, but I really would have liked to have heard more from her tonight celebrating workers and what she's going to do in terms of hiring main workers. You know, I know that there are bills in the legislature. President of Senate Troy Jackson's got some bills about hiring main workers in the House. Uh, Ryan in the House is uh, also trying to look at trying to make sure that we take care of our workforce. I really would have liked to have heard from Janet even more about what it is that she's going to do. Look, our workers are the ones who are on the front lines risking their lives right now. What are we doing to make sure that we protect them, to give them the resources that they need to be able to, you know, uh, survive, pay their rent, hopefully find a way to get ahead a little bit? Because, you know, the economic gap in this country has gotten worse during covid the wealthy, the Amazons, the Walmarts, these entities are getting wealthier by the minute. And struggling families across this state are just, they're falling behind every day. And so I think hearing from Janet tonight more about their stories would have been helpful. I, look, I mean, as I said earlier, Janet is incredibly competent and she knows how government works. I served with her uh, you know, we had battles together. She won more battles than I won for sure because she understands government better. Um, but I really would have liked to have seen something in this speech that just said to us, here's the thing that a year from now you're going to know that I fought for. You know, Governor Baldacci with Dirigo Health or creating the community colleges or Angus King when he was talking about domestic violence and that was going to be his focus or climate change. Take one issue really make that something that you're going to carry forward in the next year. We understand COVID. We understand how complicated, how hard that is. We're living it every day. Give us some hope. Tell us what's coming. And final question for you both. Um, we'll start with you, Phil. Uh, the Republican response uh, hinted at this idea of unity. There's been this call, even with the Biden administration, to, to bring Republicans and Democrats together. Is that even possible at this point? And did governor's address, um, albeit playing it safe, kind of allude to that as well? Uh, I sure hope so, Zach, because that's how our, our uh, democracy was founded on the basis that the majority 
doesn't have the ability to tyrannize the minority and it all rests in the hands of the majority. And if, if uh, Troy Jackson and, and Governor Mills want to uh, uh, demonstrate that, they're the ones who, who, who have the power to be uh, uh, welcoming and responsive and conciliatory. And uh, I sure hope that's what we see unfold because that's what Maine people want. Mainers are not, you know, you're either on the far left or on the far right. The people who control the direction of the state of Maine are the people who go to vote on election day, who are that minority in the middle. They determine the direction of the state of Maine. And what they're looking for is a, uh, don't, don't tell me, show me. And if you're gonna tell me we're gonna be bipartisan and cooperative, then show me. And the people who have the most power to show are the ones who have the power, which is the governor and the speaker of the house and the president of the Senate. Don't tell us, show us. Ethan, final thoughts tonight. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, uh, Senator Timberlake, leader Timberlake coming forward and saying we need that. You know, he's got to understand that he's in a very small minority. Certainly the majority shouldn't tyrannize the minority. I don't think anybody's saying that. But Democrats do own both bodies right now. They have significant majorities. They expanded their majority in the Senate. They did reduce it in the House, but it's still a solid majority. They should use those majorities to pass the policies that Maine people put them in place to do and that put Janet Mills in place to do. I think Janet's number one task is to be meeting continuously with Democratic leadership saying, okay, what are your values? What are my values? Let's bring those values to, together. Troy, what are your bills? Ryan, what are your bills? Committee chairs, come to the table and start putting together a really strong democratic agenda, you know, because people want, look, look at what's going on nationally, right? Joe Biden, he's not mincing any words. He's going for it. He's going big. He wants to be Lyndon Johnson. He wants to be FDR. He's like, the moment is now. Let's embrace it. Love to see a little bit more out of that uh, from Janet Mills. All right. Still a lot more work to be done. Phil Harriman, Ethan Strimling, thank you so much for taking the time and joining us tonight. We'll have a lot more on all of this tonight on New Center Maine. But for now, have a great night, everybody. Thanks. Oh.